What you are seeing is a meeting of your team of heart rhythm specialists going over your case and others like yours. You're likely to see most of us during your care here at the hospital. Be assured each of us knows your case. You're watching this recording because you are at high risk for a cardiac arrest. Oftentimes, people think this is the same as a heart attack. Let's clear that up. Simply stated, a heart attack is a plumbing problem. In a heart attack, the artery that supplies blood and oxygen to your heart becomes blocked and heart muscle dies. Sudden cardiac arrest is caused by a change in the heart's rhythm. If your heart returns to its normal rhythm quickly, the heart and brain recovers completely. If the rhythm persists, the brain gets no blood and you die. An implantable cardiac defibrillator, or ICD, is a form of life insurance. If your heart rhythm is stable, it just watches. If there are minor changes in your heart rhythm, it just watches. However, if you develop a life-threateningly fast heart rhythm, such as ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, the ICD will recognize that and treat it within a few seconds. The treatment may be a form of pacing to interrupt the short circuit that causes your heart to race, or it may be an electrical shock to stop the abnormal heart rhythm and allow a normal rhythm to resume. We know you have questions. I'd like to introduce you to Henry and his wife Grace and let them relate their story as Henry receives an ICD. We will explain what's involved from our perspective. Henry and Grace will explain what's involved from their perspective. I was at home sitting on my computer. I wasn't doing anything strenuous when all of a sudden I got this funny feeling right in my chest. Next thing I know, I'm ending up here in the hospital. When I got to the emergency room, the doctors were explaining what had happened when Henry had his cardiac arrest. The doctor in the emergency room, he said my heart was just quivering, and so it wasn't beating right, and uh, my body wasn't getting enough blood. That's right, Henry. The abnormal rhythm you had is called ventricular fibrillation, or VF. And that's an abnormal rhythm of the bottom chambers of the heart, the main pumping chambers called the ventricles. And the rhythm beats so rapidly, or causes the heart to beat so rapidly, that the pumping chambers actually just quiver. That results in inadequate blood flow to the rest of the body, especially the brain. If the brain gets inadequate blood flow, then it lacks oxygen and can cause people to pass out if that rhythm persists for even just a few seconds. If it persists even longer than that without being interrupted, it can result in sudden death. Well, I knew something was terribly wrong, so I called 911. The firemen came and they shocked him with those paddle things. It's called defibrillation. I don't know, but it really made him jump. I don't want to go through that again. I can't remember whether it was my hearing or my sight that went first. I mean, I was absolutely helpless. It was just like I was falling into this darkness. I, I, is there a place I can go to get the cigarette ticket? If you're afraid of dying, we can get rid of these things. But honey. Don't butt honey me, Henry Williams. Our lifestyle brought us here, and we can fix that. What the doctors do from here on will last a long time. All right. So, doctor, what is this defibrillator gizmo and how does it get into my body? Well, a defibrillator is a, what we consider relatively small device. Uh, this is an example of, of what the kind of thing we're putting in at this point. Uh, it's about the size of a small pager, a little bit smaller than a cell phone. It's going to sit up in that area. Uh, under the skin and some of the tissues, but outside the muscle and outside the chest. And you can take a look at that if you'd like. What that's going to do is watch your heart rhythm. As long as your heart rhythm is okay, the device is just going to watch. But if it speeds up dangerously, uh, the device will get you out of that fast heart rhythm. Up to about 200 beats per minute, we can generally pace you out. Uh, over 250 beats per minute, we generally need to use a shock. Between 200 and 250, sometimes we can get you with the pacing, and sometimes it's an electrical shock. You don't mean like what the paramedics did? The paramedics did this from outside his body. This defibrillator's inside his body, so it's only going to need about a tenth of the energy of what the paramedics used. But don't forget, this device is always there. It's like an insurance policy. And it's just watching his heart rhythm, but if it gets 
out of rhythm and into the dangerous fast heart rhythm, it's going to respond within a few seconds. You don't have to call the paramedics and hope that they get there on time. Uh, the device is right there. Henry, the ICD has two main components, the pulse generator and the lead. And there can be more than one lead, as has been explained. <clears throat> the pulse generator acts as a tiny computer. It also houses the battery. This is the main component of the defibrillator. The leads, however, attach to the pulse generator and go down into the heart, as has been explained. And through this, the pulse generator is allowed to detect the heart rhythms and deliver therapy when needed. Defibrillators can consist of one, two, or three leads, depending on the nature of your arrhythmia and other problems you may have in your heart. Multiple studies have shown that defibrillators are superior to medical therapy in preventing sudden cardiac death in patients at high risk, such as yourself. Ask her if you need an echo. Echo? Echo. Echo? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it, Henry. How can you be funny at a time like this? Because I'm a little frightened about all this. And I might add a little angry. I mean, if I can't laugh, I'm going to scream. Henry has the right idea, Grace. It's normal to feel a little bit frightened. Yeah. And many times, patients who are getting defibrillators have a lot of feelings and emotions that they don't really understand. In fact, we do have an ICD support group, and we'll let you know when the next meeting is scheduled. Well, how, how does, does the ICD... It... I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay, what I, what we want to know is how does this ICD get in my body? The procedure will be done in the electrophysiology laboratory. You will have nothing to drink or eat after midnight the night before the procedure. You will be sedated during the procedure, so you'll remember typically very little. Once you're in the EP laboratory, we'll go ahead and anesthetize the area where your defibrillator will be. Then we will make a two-inch incision right underneath the collarbone, usually on the left side. After that, we make what we call a pocket underneath the skin on top of the muscle. From there, that's where the defibrillator will actually sit. Then we will go ahead and place the leads in your heart. We can put one, two, or three leads in your heart, depending on your specific rhythm condition. There are a number of small veins in your arm that lead into one large vein right here in the shoulder. What we do is we put an IV in that large vein, and through that, we advance our lead into the heart. The IV is removed and then the lead is placed under x-ray uh, to the apex of the heart. Once the leads are secured, we then need to test them to make sure the device will appropriately detect and treat your abnormal heart rhythm. We sort of short circuit the heart, causing ventricular fibrillation to make sure the device does detect it properly and deliver an appropriate shock, restoring the rhythm back to normal. Once we know the device works properly, um, then we close up the incision and you go back to the recovery area. You, of course, will be sedated or sleeping during that whole part of the procedure, so you won't really feel anything or be aware of what's happening. So from then on, this ICD has complete control of my heart? It's going to be watching your heart all the time, but it's only going to step in and do something if the heart gets way out of rhythm. So most of the time, the vast majority of the time, you're going to be under your own heart rhythm. So... When I get a shock, and I'm not sedated, and I can remember, what does that feel like? Well, we've heard different things from people. Uh, sometimes people describe it as getting kicked in the chest, and sometimes actually people describe it as a shock. Uh, people get shocks in the middle of the night when they're asleep and not even know it. We find out about it a couple of months later when they come to the office. Well, at least you'll be alive. You can either complain about it, or you can be thankful for the whole thing. But I do have a silly question. Well, I think the only silly question is the one that you worry about and don't ask us. What I wanted to know was if, well, if someone like me were holding on to him when he got shocked, what would it do to me? You may have a mild sensation, something similar to static electricity, but more than likely you won't feel anything at all. That's good. I don't like static electricity. Oh, I don't mind static electricity. Why don't we change? Ha ha ha. Now, if you do get a shock, I want you to give us a call that same day. And we're going to ask how you're feeling. We're going to want to know what was happening before the shock. If you get more than one shock, 
we're going to want you to call 911 and get to the lo to the local emergency room and you're going to need to be evaluated right away. The defibrillator stores information in the computer portion of your device. If you get one shock, we ask you to call the office. If you have more than one shock, you should call 911. Okay. Uh, you'll need to keep your incision clean and dry for about the first two and a half days. Uh, on the third day, you can go ahead and shower. We just don't want the water streaming over your incision. Okay. This all helps to, to limit infection. Um, we also don't want you to submerse the incision underneath water for about the first four weeks. So that includes swimming, getting in a hot tub. Okay. Okay. Uh, all sutures are inside and it'll dissolve on their own. Um, okay. You have little special pieces of tape that are called steri strips. All right. um, we expect those to stay on your incision for about 10 days. Um, if they're not completely off by about the 10 day point, they'll probably be slightly curled back. You can just gently peel them over your incision. Okay. For those first three days without showering, you might want to consider using the guest room. I've already thought about that, my dear. Thank you very much. He's so considerate. Your incision should gradually look better each day. Um, the things that we're looking for are signs and symptoms of infection. We don't want to see any increased redness, uh, swelling, any drainage from that site. Um, if you notice those things, we want to hear from you right away. Okay. How soon can I get back to my regular activities? We want, we want you to take it easy with that arm for about a month. We want okay. you to gradually work your arms to shoulder level, uh, but we don't want to see that arm above shoulder level. No reaching up on high shelves, uh, stretching across, um, but do gradually increase the movement up to shoulder level. You brush your teeth, you know, scratch your head, those are all okay. Okay. I can, I, I can help keep an eye on him too. Can he use that arm at all? Yeah, he should, he should just gradually increase the activity with the arm. Again, for the first four weeks, we don't want it above shoulder level. Um, but we do encourage regular movement, moving the arm to shoulder level eventually. Um, we don't want you to lift anything greater than 20 pounds for about the first four weeks as well. Well, if you're talking about bowling, golf, tennis, swimming, I don't do those things normally. That's not true. You like to swim. Well, yeah, but... Like we said, no swimming for about the first four weeks. Um, we're limiting your activity because we want to allow those ICD leads time to heal. Uh, once they're fully healed into the heart, we expect you to return to your normal activities. Well, what about driving? Many patients who get an ICD can drive after a few days, um, but you've had an event where you've actually passed out. So the doctor's going to limit your driving for up to six months. We'll see you back at six months, and if you've been event-free, then perhaps he can release you to driving. Um, even though the device is very quick, if you were to have an event while driving, uh, you're at risk for, for having a serious accident, and we don't want to see that. Uh, so again, we'll see you back at six months, okay. look at your device, see if you've had any events, and then the doctor will decide whether he's going to release you to drive or not. Uh, you know, uh, we haven't talked about the activity. Oh, that was subtle. But it is a good question. Yes, it is. Generally, you can resume that activity after a few days. Um, you can be reassured that the device will be monitoring your heart that whole entire time. A friend of mine has a defibrillator, and he says he has to avoid magnetic fields. Is that some kind of science fiction plot or what? Well, your friend's correct, Henry. Big electrical fields can be a problem, but for most of us, that isn't an issue. Uh, arc, arc welding is one thing that we'd want you to avoid. Uh, working on or being around large motors is another thing that could, could produce that uh, electrical noise that your ICD would see. Uh, the next thing would be an MRI. Uh, Henry, we don't want you to have any MRIs. How about household appliances? 
microwaves, power tools, hair dryers, uh, all the household appliances are okay. Okay. Um, cell phones, you want to make sure that you use your cell phone on the opposite side of your ICD. So in your case, you want to talk to your cell phone in the right ear. We're planning on traveling now that we're retired. What about the airport security? We don't want you to go through a metal detector. Um, it, again, it produces a large magnetic field that could disrupt your ICD. Uh, you will be discharged with a temporary identification card and receive your permanent identification card from the company here in a few weeks. Okay. Uh, you just want to present that to the security guard and ask for a hand search. Sometimes they use the uh, electro electromagnetic wand. Uh, we would prefer that they don't use that. Uh, another use for the card, we want you to have that so your dentists um, and your other physicians will know that you have a device. One last question, I think. Uh, how long would that battery last in the ICD? The ICD battery typically lasts about five years. Each time you're in the office, we interrogate your ICD. We get information on the battery uh, as well as the leads. Um, as the battery begins to wear down, uh, we'll be checking your ICD more frequently. When the battery reaches a point where we need to change out the ICD generator, um, we expect to be able to do that uh, Pretty simply, uh, we'll change the generator and we, we'll use the same leads most likely. Will he have to go through the whole procedure like he did this time? It's not the same procedure, a little bit less involved. Um, we we'll want to make sure that the device and the leads function appropriately and recognize ventricular fibrillation. Um, usually, you're only in the hospital for a few hours and go home the same day. Well, Kevin, we both thank you. I don't know about you, honey, but I'm ready to go home. Well, thank you, Henry, and we'll see you soon for your incision check, and uh, just call our office if you have any questions. All right. Thank you, Kevin. We'll see you soon. You know, it seems like my cardiac arrest happened a long time ago. Now I can do almost anything I want. The first few times I left the house for the gym, She'd hug me like she was never going to see me again. Now, she just waves goodbye. Ready to get me out of her hair, probably. Ah, she just doesn't worry as much now. With my ICD, no one has to worry. But I wouldn't worry anyway. Not when I feel this good.